Hello everyone, welcome back to the Lovecraftian video game retrospective and welcome to the hunt for the Red Cthulhu. This is another Lovecraftian themed game from Itio, and this time you take the role of an undersea explorer in a small submarine and your goal is to find the anomaly called the Red Cthulhu. This is, well, at least title wise it's based on the Tom Clancy film slash novel of the same name. Oh, well, not the same name, it's called The Hunt for Red October, which is not quite the same name, but it's definitely inspired by that. And the game's fairly simple. You take the role of the submarine, you can move freely underwater. You have both torpedoes and charges, and depending on what the situation is, you might want to use one or the other. You navigate through these mazes here, you find keys to advance, you have to avoid enemies, kill enemies, find shields because your health is limited obviously, you've got some neat mechanics, for example in this room here you've got shadows, so occasionally you enter a room where you can't really see what's going on, so you have to be careful not to advance too quickly and not too slowly. You've got a variety of monsters, you've got these basic, they almost look like mini Cthulhu's, then you've got these tentacles, they kind of look like tentacles from Day of the Tentacle. And you've got these walking eyeballs, you've got these guys here that dive for you straight away. And overall it's a pretty neatly presented game. The graphics are very green, which is both fitting for the underwater theme and also gives the impression of this being a Game Boy game. Well, it runs smoother than most Game Boy games probably would, but nevertheless it's quite atmospheric and it's a neat little game. It doesn't really have anything more to offer than you have already seen, but it's interesting enough that it makes you wonder what's around the next corner and it does keep you going for quite a while and the controls are very tight, the animation is very fluent, frame rate is good and overall this is a very well made game and to be honest a lot better made than a lot of other, I don't want to call them budget games, that's just why you call them like non full price games we have seen in this series uh, made so. Oh, too many enemies on the screen at once. So let's get rid of these tentacles here. Yeah, all the enemies have projectiles, so don't expect to just be able to blast them away at any time. But you do have the edge most of the time. But the game gets surprisingly hard later on. So save your resources while you can. You're going to need them later. You also have these... You could also almost call them blast doors. They kind of remind me of those doors from Metroid or at least the Super Metroid and the original Metroid game. And again, this gives a nice homage to older exploration-based platformers. Whoop, didn't see that guy coming. And should have seen that guy in the shadows, but didn't. Anyway, our shield situation is quite good. And we can't get through here right now, so let's explore here. And to be honest, this is pretty much all I have to say about this game. It's pretty neat, it's also free, you can play it in your browser, you can also download it if you want, so whatever your medium of choice is. Whoa, that was a mistake. You can enjoy this game, and I'm going to leave a link in the description, and I do recommend that you check it out. So yeah, 